All right, everybody, thank you again for joining us live for New Shepard's 10th mission to space. We're at T minus two minutes to go until launch. You can feel the excitement down here. At this point, this is when we throw the show over to the rocket. She is completely autonomous from this moment through flight. And as a reminder, we're, fl we're flying a nominal flight profile today. The rocket and the capsule, they're gonna go up to 75 kilometers, 250,000 feet. The capsule separates, continues its flight up towards Apogee over the Kármán line, the internationally recognized line of space. The capsule will come down under three parachutes and that nice air cushion of the retro thrust system. And then we are looking for our ninth landing in a row from the booster at only 1,200 feet above ground, excuse me, 1,200 meters or 3,600 feet above ground level. The BE-3 engine is gonna relight for a nice soft landing. All right, at this point, the rocket is going to be going through its built-in tests. We're going to see, there you go, the aft fins moving, making sure it has free range of motion. Shortly here, we're going to see the BE-3 engine gimbal. While the rocket is doing this all on her own, our engineers in the Mission Control Center have their eyes on the screens. We, again, want to make sure that the propellants are properly pressurized as well as in the temperature bounds. A lot easier to do during a cold morning like this in January. All right, we're at T minus 30 seconds to go. It is game time, New Shepard. Godspeed. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, command engine start, 2, 1. She continues to punch her way to space. A beautiful burn on that BE-3 engine. I'm telling you, that gets me every single time. The rumble as it was clearing the tower was something to be felt down here, let me tell you. All right. We are continuing our climb to space. Our next highlight is going to be main engine cutoff. But at this point, our new Shepard payloads are inside the capsule. They're starting to feel those Gs are gonna come on gradually. We're gonna max at about three Gs on ascent. And then maybe counterintuitive to some, the, uh, the max Gs that the payloads are gonna feel are about five just momentarily as the capsule comes in uh, that back into the atmosphere. All right, main engine cutoff is confirmed. While the speed is declining, you'll notice, of course, that the rocket and the, and the capsule are continuing its ascent to space. We're coming up shortly on separation. That is when the capsule is going to separate from the booster. 
There it is. Separation is confirmed. At this point, if you were an astronaut on board, this is when you're going to start to feel that weightlessness. We're going to let you unbuckle. I know I'd be doing my somersaults in there before taking in those spectacular views out of the world's largest windows that have ever been to space. 300,000 feet. There you see the two distinct craft in your screen. Those payloads now are getting their nice, clean micro G's. We have crossed the 350,000 foot mark, which is what we were aiming for. Wow, almost right on the nose. 350,775 feet, thousand feet. That is absolutely incredible. That is exactly what we were targeting. Now, of course, this is the unofficial altitude of our apogee. We will be confirming all of these statistics after the flight. All right, both craft are heading back home. You can see the booster is gaining speed. The booster is actually going to beat the capsule back to her landing pad, which is just two miles north of where it's taken off from. You see the booster on the right, the capsule on the left. The capsule is about to hit atmospheric pierce point. That's when it comes back in through the atmosphere. At that point, it's going to have some good air pressure to be able to push against for those control systems to, to work with. Now we've got the wedge fins that have deployed. So those are the fins at the top of the rocket that are housed in the ring fin. They keep the rocket stable. They work with the ring fin itself, which centralizes the air pressure that flows through the ring fin, keeps it nice and upright, just aerodynamically. Of course, it works in concert with the aft fins, which you saw going through their bit checks right before flight. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us live for this 10th mission of the New Shepard test program. Everything looking nominal in flight so far. We hit an apogee of 350,000 feet. So far, another beautiful flight for New Shepard and the team. Next year, we're looking for the drag brakes to deploy. There we go. Drag brakes deployed. That is cutting the speed. I can see New Shepard right over my shoulder. She is coming in. Boom! There we go. So the motor just came in nicely. Touchdown. Welcome home, New Shepard. Wow, absolutely spectacular flight. That is the fourth mission to space and back for that rocket. 
That, everybody, is a reusable rocket. Absolutely beautiful. Incredible. All right, the show is not over. We're gonna wait for the crew capsule to come home. No crew in it today. We've got eight NASA payloads that have just had three to four minutes of some really clean micro G's. But if you were an astronaut, can you imagine the views out of those windows after getting your own time to float in space? There go the drogues. Those are the guide parachutes. We're now waiting for the mains. A little bit of coning. That's all right. Those mains should take care of that. Reefing of the parachutes. Now waiting for full inflation. There we go. Absolutely beautiful. A nice steady descent, 15, 16 miles an hour. We're about 1,500 feet above ground level. We, of course, are at 3,700 feet here at our West Texas launch site above mean sea level. Capsule coming back into our valley here in West Texas. Picture perfect flight so far. Wow, what a day. Last seconds, retro thrust system is gonna fire just in the last milliseconds, that is, it's gonna kick up the dust down here, but it provides a nice air cushion for all of those payloads on board today. And touchdown. Welcome home, New Shepard. Incredible day. Kudos to the whole team. Kudos to our customers that are down here. A big thank you to NASA for being part of this mission. Absolutely beautiful. Well done to everybody involved today. Okay, so I've already seen our recovery team has already started to head out towards both vehicles. They're gonna be going through all the, the safing operations and we're gonna be getting those customers out to the capsule shortly here so they can go check out their, uh, their payloads and start crunching all that wonderful data that they've gotten from their flight to space and back today. What a view. All right, let's go through some unofficial statistics here. Mission launch time, 9.05 a.m. Central Standard Time. Maximum ascent velocity, 2,226 miles per hour, or about 3,600 kilometers per hour. Crew capsule apogee, 350,775 feet, or about 107 kilometers. Mission elapsed time, 10 minutes and 15 seconds of launch excitement. That was just an incredible day. And I can tell you, being outside, listening to the booms, watching that engine relight, I, oh my God, what a day. Okay, I wanna thank again our friends at NASA for, uh, for joining us today. Just a wonderful day to launch rockets. I want to encourage you all to go to our website if you'd like to fly with us. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna go check out the crew capsule right now. I want you guys to join me on Instagram. And until our next exciting launch, my name is Ariane Cornell and Gradatum Ferocitor.